Well, a typical boiler water system, we have to look at is basically almost a closed water system. Uh, it, the only losses you ever have from a typical boiler system is where we lose some steam and where we actually get some blowdown from the boiler. If you can minimize both of those, you are basically almost a completely closed system. Your makeup, uh, which is coming in in the upper right hand uh, corner of the picture, this diagram here is uh, the makeup water that comes in, and you prepare that to whatever pressure boilers that you require, just like we were talking about earlier on the guidelines. And that preparation of that water either reduces our mineral content or our hardness, etc. That is blended, of course, as we know, with the condensate uh, coming back, the steam being condensed and coming back. That mixes with the makeup water, goes to the deaerator, where we're actually really trying to remove most of the dissolved gases from that particular uh, makeup water, that feed water operation. And this is the deaerator. That then in turn then goes to the boiler, where we actually are then producing steam, we have to use a little blowdown from the boiler to maintain our control levels, and the steam goes out to where various other uses, and that will continue to operate to very efficiently if you're treating it well. So the different type of boilers we have are, first of all, fire tube boilers. These are the ones that have been started for years, and we still utilize this as a diagram of but perhaps this is a better understanding of the fire tube boiler. We actually have the flame actually going to the back of the boiler, then comes through the tubes. So that's, that's why we call it the fire tube boiler, of course, and the water is on the outside, and that produces our, our steam. The advantages of these fire tube boilers, of course, are that they uh, are good for low-pressure operation. They're very, very reliable and uh, have been used for years. They do require only a small uh, space uh, for operation, so consequently that is a major advantage. There are some disadvantages of the fire tube boilers. Um, the major ones are they're limited, of course, on, on pressure. We seldom get over 300 PSI, maybe just a little bit over, but generally speaking, we hold it to a maximum of 300 PSI. Uh, the other area, of course, is because the fire tube boilers have a limited steam area where the steam separation occurs from the boiler water, it's fairly small, so consequently the water the steam quality is not as good as it would be over a, 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 a water tube boiler. So consequently, we do have a concern about steam quality and usually don't use those type of boilers for uh, producing uh, a turbines and driving turbines because of the poor quality of, uh, of steam. Uh, the water tube boilers, of course, exactly the fires on the outside of the tubes and the water's on the inside of the tubes. Here's a good example of a water tube boiler. That's uh, what we call a type D boiler. It's only designated D because we do have up in the upper left-hand corner, we have what we call a steam drum. That's where our feed water comes in. That's where our steam production actually is occurring. And then we also have a, another drum that's located at the bottom left-hand corner of this boiler that's known as the mud drum. That's where a lot of our sediment and sludge accumulates, and that's where we blow it down from there. And, of course, the configuration of the boiler tubes gives us what we, it looks like a, a type D type of uh, design, so that's why they call it a type D boiler. Uh, we do have various designs. Those designs can be an A-type boiler, an O-type boiler, an L-type boiler, a variety of things. It mainly just looks at the configuration of the boiler with the with the mud drum and the steam drum and also the the um, boiler tubes and what they form this type of uh, uh, A, B, C, D, or L, or what have you. Again, we're on un unlimited pressure on these water tube boilers. We can go, you know, 2,000, 3,000 PSI. Uh, the high-pressure boilers are used in utility power plants. The most important aspect of the water tube boilers is they provide good steam quality. That steam quality, of course, is very, very good for us because if we need to be able to be driving turbines and using them for process operation where it requires excellent steam quality, the water tube boiler just excels in that area. Some of the disadvantages of the water tube boiler is, of course, it requires a lot of space. It, it, it does certainly requires very good water quality as contrasted to the fire tube boilers. So we do have, of course, a concern because of the higher pressure and the higher, higher temperatures involved in it. There's a, it's a much more sensitive to deposits and corrosion in, in water tube boilers.